time something different comes along, I'm always kind of excited about it because my work is such a redundancy and I have very, very little jobs where I'm challenged. This particular job is a challenge to me because all I'm specifically doing, this was a, well, it would ordinarily be a tub to shower conversion, which is why I titled it How to Do a Tub to Shower Conversion on a Slab. It's relatively easy when you have plywood. You can get into it, you can center the drain, you can do all your plumbing from underneath and patch back in the wood, but you can't do that on a concrete slab. A lot of houses, I'm sure in California and the East Coast, and especially in Florida and up along that coast where they're all concrete slab construction. And I have had questions in the past as far as how you do something like this. Um, and, and I'm gonna go backwards a little bit in time. This is actually a basement where they had done the rough in. The rough end, you see where that box was. Anytime you have a tub, there's going to be a boxed in area where they actually pour the slab when they're doing the new construction and they have some plywood inside of here, or it might be some 1x6 or 1x8 or whatever. So they build out a little box. This one's a little shorter than normal, but basically, when you take out that box, you're looking at dirt and the P trap is under, under that, all that dirt, it's under grade. Um, so Normally, when I do a tub to shower conversion on a slab like this, I can get into that box, I can manipulate that drain. It's usually going to be an inch and a half because it was roughed in for an inch and a half tub. In this case, they're doing a shower. So what I would normally do, and you have to have a two inch drain for a shower. So what I would normally do is I would dig out as much dirt as I could until I almost got to the P-trap, and then I would do a transition to two inch, have, um, have a 45, uh, sorry, a 90 and then another 90 coming up so I can bump out away from this wall. If you notice, it's probably 5 inches to the drain cap to the wall there, about 5 inches or so. And I like to get it out to about 9 inches or 12 if I can. That would be ideal so you can actually get some tile on the back end of it. In this case, what they've done, um, <laughs> so this, as I said, this was a rough end and they decided they were going to do a shower, but whoever decided to do the drain and this was a while back, decided to go, the transition is underneath where they have poured. So in other words, this is normally, as I said, boxed in and it's just dirt. So they went ahead and took the box out. Um, they dug in the dirt. They went down at a certain point and they transitioned from the inch and a half that's currently there to a two inch. Then they poured in the concrete, which would be great if they actually set this flange for the drain flush with the floor, but they didn't. If you see there, you've got probably three inches, I'm going to say about three and a half inches, of rise above where the slab is at. So what we have here is a bit of a conundrum, and the only way to fix this, there's three parts of a drain, as I've explained on previous videos. This is a drain barrel, which has a drain cap on it. Second part is where your pan lighter wants to go on to. Hold on a second. So these bolts are specifically meant to bolt down onto your pan liner once that's placed. Did they glue this in? Oh my god, I think they glued this in. Maybe inadvertently. Just loosening these four bolts should have made this top flange movable, but it's not. So that's a little concerning. This whole thing is going to go, by the way. Whoops! I just dropped one of the bolts in the drain. So, one of the things I have in my tool pouch is a telescoping magnet. For that reason... Oh my god! Seriously? That's a first. They glued this top flame. <laughs> That's a first. I've never, never seen that. And it doesn't matter that I ruined it, and I definitely ruined it. Because um, this is all going to go anyway. That should have never been glued, or whatever they did there. I think they slopped their glue around too much. So it looks like they did their reducer to their inch and a half right inside of the drain. This is actually a two inch on the outside of here, you can see. So they did it right at surface level. They didn't even go down into the dirt, which is the reason they have all of this rise up here. Had they gone into the dirt a little bit and done the same exact thing and got this part flush, then we'd be okay. I can also see that it's cockeyed pretty profoundly. This is much lower than this end over here, so that's no good either. 
So, um, there's not an easy way to, to fix this. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to dig out all this concrete that they poured here. I've got to dig all that stuff out, at least in this box area, perhaps a little bit more. Get down to that four or maybe six inches of concrete into the dirt area and hopefully not dis disrupt the pipe. If the pipe cracks, then I'm in bigger trouble and then i got to dig down deeper. So, it's a bit of a hassle. Um, but there's there's no way to fix this. As I said before when I first started, this first flange needs to set flush on the floor. Then you put your pan liner on, and the pan liner goes over this top flange, and then I do little X's along here, put my bolts through the pan liner like that, and then I do an X right inside the center of the drain, not all the way to the edge of the drain, but just in the center of the drain, and then I'm able to get up under there and feel where the hole is, and then push my bolt through there. Then, once that's done, this top top flange goes on there and it gets bolted down, as you just saw me take off all the bolts, and I lost one down inside. And then, eventually, this barrel of the drain goes down there and it twists down to the height you want it, and then your mortar material, remember the pan is on top of here, right? So all the mortar material goes on top of here, and then you, you screw your barrel down and you're ready to pour your pan. So, now we have this little, no, not little, we have this big issue of getting all this stuff out in order to do it right. Um, and that's why I'm here. I'm not going to be tiling any of this. This is this whole all prep was done by somebody else, and they did a pretty decent job on doing all the prep. I have to say so myself, where the sheetrock meets the Durarock, it's pretty smooth. They use tape. You know, they, they just, they really did a good job on here. Curb is a little higher than what I would normally do. Don't know why they did it so high. And I believe the tile is around here somewhere. So it's going to be this river rock um, shaved stone, if you will, along with this, I think it's three, three by 12 inch tile. It's going to go on, on the walls. Um, the reason, one of the main reasons that they decided on this river rock is what I mentioned before. The space that you have to work with, as far as tile goes, is minuscule. It's probably about three inches by the time everything is said and done with the wallboard on here. It's going to be about three inches. So you're going to, at the end of the job, you need all this tile to slope from the highest point, which is going to be down there, all the way down to the edge of the drain, and then the mortar and the tile is going to slope down this way and this way, and you need a little pitch going down this way. You can't get a two by two. You barely get one piece in here at the end, um, so it would be very, very difficult at best. Um, with with this type of stone, the little pieces can be actually taken off of this mat, and those pieces can be placed in there at such an angle on the slope that it begets uh, water flowing down to the drain properly. And that's what I'm doing. And so I will go through the process. I'm going to actually get a chisel and see how tough this is. I don't know if this is a sand topping mix or if they actually use concrete. Um, but I also have a small jackhammer that will facilitate getting that out of there and hopefully I don't crack the pipe. So I took a couple of swings at it with a, with a um, chisel, cold chisel, and uh, not getting through there very easily so I'm going to have to get out my jackhammer. First thing I'm going to do before I start that. Guys, if, if you don't already own one of these Dremel uh, tools, I suggest highly you get one. They're, they are just so convenient. They have multi-uses. Obviously, this is specifically meant to cut below door jams when I'm doing tile. But, you know, jobs like these where it's very hard to get in there with a the sawzall, this is an excellent tool. So, just as I suspected, there's a bushing in here, and this bushing that they put around this inch and a half pipe facilitates putting this two inch pipe 
um, which basically becomes a reducer at that point. Um, so that's exactly what they did. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, this is a P-trap immediately because I tried to put my put my magnetic telescoping magnetic tool in there, and I could not retrieve that bolt. So unfortunately, all this is going to have to come out. All this uh, concrete is going to have to come out until I get to uh, below slab level. Uh, by the way, just just another another little uh, caveat. Another little thing I want to mention. Um, I've gotten a lot of flack lately. Some some of my subscribers, or maybe they're not subscribers, I don't know, have chastised me about begging from my Patreon account, which the link is always below in my videos. It's also at my the end of my video. Um, YouTubers make a lot of money off of YouTube. There's advertising. There's usually like a little box of advertising down at the bottom of your video, or there's an advertisement prior to your video showing, and then you can click off in five seconds or whatever. That's Google putting advertising on there. And so all YouTubers share in the profits of that advertising. There are YouTubers on, on YouTube that actually make a living from that advertising. They're making easily two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month off of just Google advertising. And as I said on my, my outro, I make nothing off of YouTube. And if you go to your favorite YouTubers, I guarantee they're making, in fact, there's a couple people on YouTube that I follow that I know for a fact they're making about three or four grand a month. So, just to put that to rest, when when I'm showing you stuff, and there's a lot of tricks to be had in here, and I'm showing you stuff, and I'm asking you, you know, to go to my Patreon and be a Patreon member, you know, it's a dollar a month, twelve dollars a year. If you put five dollars, say you put five dollars on my my Patreon, right? Become a Patreon member. That's sixty dollars in a year. I don't know where you're going to get this type of advice to how to build your shower and all that stuff. And, and just be able to call somebody and get advice from them. Instead, you're watching these free videos that I produce, and the only reason that I produce them is for your consumption, right? I don't need to know all this stuff. I'm not producing them for me. I'm not producing them because I have some outside school or some type of video link or something. If you go here and you pay this amount, you get to watch these videos. These videos are free for you to watch on YouTube. So if you're spending $60, that's $5 a month in a year, that's nothing for the advice that I'm giving on here. Um, so those are to my... Uh, some of my haters, <laughs> I have quite a few. And that is a danger that you face. This obviously got cracked from the pressure, which means I have to go even further down, which I would have had to anyway, because as you see, this was glued in here at that point. I gotta get down to some bare pipe. Maybe even the P-trap. Okay, it is about 20 minutes. I'm gonna say 20 minutes later. I have dug down to the dirt. If you notice, we have red Georgia clay here so I've gotten that far and it's a good as I guessed already a good six inches I think the slab itself is four but there was a lot of excess concrete down there where they had poured it after they had done this drain uh, my worst fear was that I would have no bite which I don't because you saw where I broke off that other piece however good for me they put a 45 on here a 45 on an inch inch and a half pipe so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it right here, put another 45 on, make it come straight, and probably take out another, I don't know, take out another 8 inches or so 
of concrete so I could get that extra width that I was talking about before instead of being three inches off the wall I'm going to try and get nine maybe ten inches off the wall just by taking this out putting another once I do that I can put another 45 on there transition the two inch and then put a 90 on here bring it up and uh, should be good to go but then I have to wait a day to pour this and get that set up before I can do anything else all right so I managed to get about another I don't know I guess about another nine inches or so coming out this direction my drain will eventually set here which is a good foot off of the wall so what I'm going to do is get in here with my Dremel to cut that inch and a half pipe. I don't have a 45 with me, um, so unfortunately I have to stop what I'm doing, but I'll cut it down probably around the middle here. And as I said before, I'll clear out some of this stuff, put a 45 on there, which will get it straight. Then I can run a line of inch and a half pipe over to this area, put um, a 90 inch and a half going up, and then a short piece of uh, inch and a half which is going to look something like this. This is a bushing, which is what he had originally put in there, which I cut out. So this is one I've had in my truck for a while. So the inch and a half pipe will end up sticking up like that. Not so far though. And then this bushing is an inch and a half right there. And then the outside part is two inch. So my drain is two inch and that's not the drain, but Eventually that will be the bottom of the drain that slides right into there gets glued in that slides right on top of that That gets glued in and then voila your drain sits like that um, It's a little easier to do with inch and a half I'm kind of glad that they didn't transition further down with the inch and a half. I'm able to do um, my 90s and and get a pretty quick pitch whereas I wouldn't normally be able to with a couple of uh, two inch 90s so for that I'm thankful but I only have 190 and I don't have any 45 so now I gotta run to Home Depot but I have to go to Home Depot anyway because I need a bag of cement to fill this in so this can dry overnight and I can get started on the rebuild. So I've gotten to the point where everything's cut out and all the dirt is taken out and so I have um, I finally managed to get a 45 and the way that works the 45 goes on there and then the rest of it I have somewhere. So here's the 90 that I was speaking of. Now there's different types of 90s, especially where their water is concerned on a shower like this. This is the other type of 90, what I would call a quick 90. This is a sweeping 90. And this is the one you would want. And this is the one I'm putting in. So that would end up going in like that. And then my uh, bushing. In there and the bushing is already attached by virtue of a smaller piece of inch and a half that I've already pre put in there there's not any glue on it right now but you need enough bite on both ends so the bushing is where my thumb is at the little piece of inch and a half is right there and then you have this part of the 90 and then the drain fits right on top the problem is I don't quite have enough room to make that happen yet I'm still a couple inches off of the off of the uh, floor, which means I have to cut back over there a little bit more. And the way I'm going to do that, because I can't get in there with my Dremel anymore, is an inside pipe cutter. So I'm going to cut the rest of that out up until I have just enough bite for that um, 45 over there, and then I'll be able to get a little lower at that point. All right, with the configuration done already, it is level. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not bubble there and then you always do it crossways also make sure both sides are level again I don't know if you can see that or not anyway it is ready to be filled and um, that is the extent of reworking a drain when you have to you don't have a choice not that I would want to but basically you get the gist of it if you were doing a tub to shower conversion in a concrete slab type configuration you still want to come out as far as possible. This is a little different than what I normally run into. Normally it comes straight up uh, from the dirt and this way it's coming in at an angle. I'm not sure why, but the P-trap is definitely back behind there and normally the P-trap will be directly below. So it's still do a couple of 90s to bring it out and offer the wall as much as you can. And the next step is 
pouring the concrete in here once again, letting that dry overnight. Once that's dry and cured, then I can go forward with putting the pan liner in. But when I did the concrete yesterday, there was a slight slope going up to the bottom of the flange, and the reason is I didn't have enough lift of my piping in order to get a nice slant, a nice even slant down to my drain. There wasn't enough lift. Um, because of that, and I couldn't take out any more of that pipe to get it down to exactly the exact level, I put in half inch backer board and I have my thin set ready and I'm going to glue all that backer board to the bottom. So, as it stands now, it is about uh, roughly not even quite a quarter inch, eh, maybe a quarter inch. So, the backer board is about a quarter inch higher than the bottom flange, which is okay. It's better to have it a little higher than lower. I would rather have my floor sloping at a slight angle going down into the drain area rather than pitched up above the way it is now, half an inch. So, I'm going to go ahead and set all this board, let that dry up for a while, and then I will continue on with putting my pan liner in. Let this set up for a couple of hours, and once that's set up, I'll be able to put my pan liner in and pour the pan and uh, be out of here. Now the pan liner is in. I didn't show the process. I have other videos I'm going to put in the description box. Um, the other videos I have putting the pan liner in, how to pour a power shower pan, get it down to where it's a drain and all that stuff, and then of course the finish product, which would be the wallboard, the red guard, and the tile. I'm not doing that on this job, so I can't show you all that stuff, so look for those links in the description box. And I'm going to get started pouring this pan. So the pan is finally poured. I have a lot of questions that get that I get uh, quite a bit. I'm going to try and go through a couple of them that I remember in regard to a concrete um, slab type thing set up that we have here. One of them is, do I need to use a pan liner if I have a concrete slab? Yes, you do. Either it's a pan liner or it's four or five coats of Red Guard because Red Guard, other topical membranes allow, topical um, waterproofers rather, allow for their product to be a pan liner. Um, I don't necessarily trust it, but to answer any of the questions out there, yes, you need a pan liner even on a slab. Uh, other question I get is, do I have to move out my drain to the center? And I think I addressed that. If I haven't already, then I will. No, you don't have to move your drain to the center. I'm very symmetrically thinking and looking, and when I see stuff that's kind of off kilter, it kind of bothers me. So ideally, yes, you want your drain in the center. Can you get it in the center if I have a slab? That's more to the point. Yes, you can get it center. As I've already demonstrated, I got it out about 12 inches where it was about three before. But you saw the work that I had to go through. So ideally, um, you want to get a concrete blade, concrete saw as it were, and you want to cut out a trough about to just past center. And how deep your concrete is, four inches or so, you get a jackhammer and you jackhammer out all that rock and everything. And take out some of the dirt and then you're able to extend your pipe out. If you have enough play, if you have enough of that quarter inch per foot that you need for that drain to drain properly, then you can bring it out to center and bring up your drain here instead of over here or back there as it were. So yes, it is possible, but if somebody asked me to do that, I would charge a boatload of money and I'm not sure that they wouldn't want to pay the whole boatload. So um, I've only done it maybe a few times. Um, this is still almost the same work, but it was a little easier because that concrete was a lot weaker around that box than this exterior concrete that's been here for years and years. Um, so that's about all I can answer. I don't know if I've missed any questions. I'm sure I'll get them in the comment section about how you do this. Um, I, I, again, I have in the description box, I have a couple other videos how to pour the pan and do the various things that I've bypassed on this. The main focus that I was trying to, to get on this video specifically was how to get my drain for a tub to shower conversion on a slab or if you just have the rough plumbing coming up and you don't want a tub, how do I make it a shower? And that's that's basically the focus. So that's done. My part is over and I'm moving on to the next job. I hope some of the information or all of it was helpful to you. And if not, sorry for wasting your time. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, 
then subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe. I make nothing off of YouTube, so please be a Patreon member. I'm gonna post a link down below to my Patreon account and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis that will help me produce more videos and, and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And donate at least fifty dollars if you're gonna call. If you're gonna call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.